Hello everyone, in this video we are going to learn how to create our own custom theme for our ServiceNow instance and override the default one. In part two of this series, we are going to learn how to create variants so that we can give our users a choice of what theme that they want to use for their instance. So in this video, we are going to go from our standard default Polaris theme that ServiceNow provides to creating our own custom theme that looks maybe a little bit like this. Have you missed the rose colored theme like everyone else and you want it back? Well, I'm gonna show you how to, so let's go. Okay, so it used to be the case once upon a time, if you wanted to change the theme, at least some basic colors in the theme, if you were a system administrator, you could just come to basic configuration, UI 16, and you could scroll down and just tinker with uh, the colors here to show something else. Uh, but now you can't do that uh, in the next experience, which is the name that ServiceNow gives to the new user experience, the new user interface uh, for ServiceNow. So how do we go ahead and actually create or change a the theme in our ServiceNow instance? Again, if you're a system administrator, we're not talking about regular users in the platform. Uh, we'll talk about that in part two of this video. So the first step is let's go and explore a little bit, shall we? And come to our themes. So if you have a look at this list here, you'll find that there is one here called Polaris, which is the one that ServiceNow uses by default. And if we open it up, we can see here that a theme is actually a container for different UI theme styles, which we see in this list here, uh, including colors, fonts, and some other properties as well, which we contain here in our theme. So, when we go ahead and create our own theme, we need to reference, and we're just talking here about changing the colors of a theme. So we're not gonna discuss how to change fonts uh, and other properties, because there's a lot that you can change and tinker in a theme. We're just gonna concentrate on colors. So this entry here is really the one that we're going to be looking at. If you actually open up this colors here, you can see this style record it's actually pretty long. It's a JSON file here that contains all kinds of different colors for all kinds of different objects to be used right throughout your instance. So you may be thinking, well, do I have to change every single line here? Um, I mean, there are thousands and thousands of lines. <laughs> no, you don't have to do that. There is an easy way, and I'm going to show you how to do this right now. So we start off by going to a table that contains these styles, which is sys. UX style. I don't believe there is a module for it, so I just put in the table name. And you can see here the list of styles uh, that are available. So let's go ahead and create a new one. I'm just gonna give this a name. Um, but actually before I create the name of the theme, I wanna make it a descriptive name to describe something about the colors in the theme. So I'm just gonna leave that record here at the moment. And I'm going to show you an easy way in which you can create the style content, the color content here for your new theme. So what I'm doing in this video is actually recapping or recalling information from an excellent community article that was posted by my colleague, Ashley Snyder, uh, uh, on our ServiceNow community website. Uh, there is a link to this page in the description below. Have a look at it. It will tell you in very simple language and simple steps how to create a theme and to apply that theme. So this is basically what I'm using as the basis for this demonstration here right now. So in this article, you will actually find that there is a link here to a color generator website. Now this is actually a ServiceNow website. So let me open it up here. I've already got it open in a separate tab right here. So there's nothing to indicate here that it's a ServiceNow website, but it actually is. If you do a, a who is on this website, uh, it will come up as belonging to ServiceNow. <laughs> so we've created this page here as a way for you to easily create your own custom theme. 
just by specifying a few basic colors. So we could come here and actually change some colors here. So what we're looking at here is the default Polaris branding, the Polaris colors here. Um, but there is actually an easier way, and that easier way is to come to this button here called Auto Generate. If you click on that, you'll be asked to specify three colors, a neutral color, a primary color, and a secondary color. So that's all you need. So how do you get these colors? Well, there are different ways. You can get them from your own marketing department uh, if you are looking to brand your instance according to your own company branding. Um, but I'm just going to show you another way to do it uh, if you just want to brand your own personal developer instance or some other instance that you're using for training and development purposes and you just need to have a different color for your instance. So uh, what I do, I mean there are different ways you can do it. Uh, I go to the uh, color wheel on the Adobe website uh, which is color.adobe.com. I'll put a link to this in the description below and we can see here there are literally thousands of themes that you can select from. Uh, you can actually go ahead and create your own uh, color scheme here. But what I usually do here is just pick a color combination here that I like and just take three colors from it. So you will find in all of these different themes uh, or color themes here, there are actually five colors, but we only need three. So let's actually scroll down and find one that we can use. Now, there are lots of different ones here. Some of them are gonna, can look a little bit funky <laughs> once you apply them to your ServiceNow instance. So we want to keep it kind of neutral here. So maybe I will take mm, maybe something a little bit darker, not so bright, so it's easy on the eye. Let's take maybe uh, this one here. So let me open up this. And as I said, we only need three colors. I actually will take the first three colors here, okay? Uh, you kind of have to mix and match and just experiment a little bit to see what the end result will be in your ServiceNow instance. And I'm definitely not a color guru, so I'm just gonna go ahead here and copy this first one here. If you just click on it, it will copy uh, the code that you need to put into your um, Polaris colors here. So my neutral color will be the one that I just copied, which is that one, which is more or less a black color. Uh, the second color will be a teal color. So I'll just copy that. Paste that in. And then my final color which is kind of a, an army green, a light army green. And just pop that in there. And there you have it. Okay, so I'm just going to click on Generate now. Okay, and if you scroll down, okay, you can see that variations of those three main colors have been generated. So what we need to do now is actually apply those colors to our new style in our ServiceNow instance. So the way you do that is you just come up here to Copy JSON. Now, if I just paste that in a text editor here, let me just bring this over here and paste that here. This is what it looks like. It's uh, 219 lines of all the colors of the rainbow, basically, right here. <laughs> so what we need to do, let me just move that away, is actually apply this now to our new style. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to give it a name now. And I'm not sure what the theme, the color palette here was called, if it had a name probably does but I can't oh there we go rock on okay so let, <laughs> let's call this rock on okay I am going to uh, change my scope here uh, just a moment yep that's okay uh, I'll just call this rock on it's going to be a core theme in part two of this series we'll talk about variants Variants will give your users the choice to change between different themes. But we'll just stick with one core theme at the moment. So before I can actually paste this JSON uh, text in here, I actually need to wrap it. Uh, so I'm just going to put a little curly bracket there. And then on a new line, enter 
properties, oh, not with a asterisk, but with a quotation mark and another quotation mark and then a semicolon and then on the next line, uh, the ending curly brace there. Now what we need to do, it's a little bit tricky, but basically you just need that little line here, uh, that little wrapper for your JSON uh, color scheme. So at this point right here, all I need to do now is just paste what I copied over from that color generator, uh, that theme generator rather. So that's what I've got here right now. And I can then go ahead and save that. So this is a style now that I'm going to apply to my new theme. And we'll call this theme Rock On as well. So I'm going to come over now to my themes. So under Now Experience Framework, Themes, Theme Management, Themes. <laughs> and go ahead and create a new one. We will give it the name of Rock On. And we'll put in a description. This theme rocks. <laughs> and um, I will save it first of all. And now in this section here, this compositional app theme section, this is where we need to specify that style that we've just created. So the way to do that, just double click there to add a new row. We don't need to add anything to this applicability field. We can just tab over to order. That can remain as the default value of zero. And now in our style field, we can specify our rock on style. So I'll just select that. And then the type of theme is going to be core. Again, we'll look at variants in the next video. Okay, so I could just go ahead and save that and apply it. But remember, themes are not just a collection of colors. They're, they also contain fonts and other objects as well. So I think the two um, main other objects that you should include here, and again, I'm referencing the article here that Ashley wrote in the community um, page here. Um, the two other ones that we need here are the UI 16 dashboard visualization compatibility. Okay, so that must be for some kind of legacy styling for our dashboard. So I'll just put that in. Okay, and we'll also make that part of the call. And then the final one here is our fonts. So we've got like a standard typography style there that we can use. And I'll save that. Hello, it's a little bit fiddly. Click, thank you. And we will make this the core as well. And go ahead and save it. And we are just about done. Okay. So um, the only thing left to do is actually to apply this theme and to override the default theme in ServiceNow. So the way to do that is to come to your system properties. Uh, and then you can search for the right one. So all the ones, all the system properties are for the new next experience themes have Polaris in the name. Polaris was the code name given internally to this new user interface before we released it in the San Diego release of ServiceNow. We can see here uh, that the Polaris experience system property is set to true. Okay, so that is set by default to true for new instances um, for San Diego, but if you're upgrading from an older instance, that will be set to false, and then the decision is up to you then if and when you want to upgrade uh, to the new user interface and you just change that property. So the, the reference here down the bottom is the reference to our custom theme, and you can see here 
kids, this is a reference to the SysID. So <laughs> we need to come back to our rock on theme and copy the SysID. Come back and I will open the property because I think I'm in a different application scope here. So I will click here. And then this is the default value for the or the, the sysid rather for the Polaris theme. So all we need to do is just replace that with our new one and save it. And that's it. So let's check out what it looks like. Let's test it before we decide to keep it or not. <laughs> so I will just refresh the page. I think it's saved. We just cancel. Okay. Instance was just a little bit slow. There we go. Now we can save. So oh, now we can refresh rather. So let's do that. And there we have it. Kind of. It's still loading a little bit slowly. I found that when you apply new themes that it just takes a little while for everything to kind of kick in and all the fonts and the menus to appear here. There we go. Working slowly but surely. So our theme, our color palette, what did it look like? It was that. So it's actually taking this teal as kind of the main theme here. So if I go back to my color generator here and go to auto generate. Yeah, that primary color there was teal. Okay, the neutral one was black and the secondary was that kind of army light green. So if we come back to our page here, it's taken that teal. So it doesn't look too bad, I would say. Okay, but the thing you should do, not should, must do, you should actually test this in a few different pages, dashboards, forms, lists, your workspaces as well, just to see that you've got all your bases covered, that you don't come across any nasty surprises uh, with your new theme. So yeah, actually what I will do is go to my service operations workspace to see what that looks like. Again, it will take a little while just to load. I think the first time I'll unpin my application menu. And yeah, that doesn't look too bad actually. So you can see it. Actually, it doesn't really matter what theme you create and apply. Uh, it's still going to keep you know white as one of the main colors for displaying forms and lists and dashboards and reports and things of this nature. There we go. Finally, it's loading. I'm not sure if it's my Wi-Fi or if it's the, my computer that's running at a probably 99.99% .99 CPU at the moment because I'm recording this. <laughs> um, but that doesn't look too bad. Okay, so there you go. That's how you create your own custom theme and apply it to your ServiceNow instance. And just remember, the links to the relevant websites that you need to get your colors and for other instructions, I will put in the uh, description below to this video. So thanks for watching. And remember, in part two of this series, we're going to learn how to create more than one theme, have one core theme, and several variants so that we give our users who are logged in the choice to switch between themes. Because at the moment, if I come to my preferences right here, we will see that there's no possibility to change our theme. So stay tuned for that video and thanks for watching.